but you're on the right track. So there's some other things. So a series of serial diagrams. Um, these have been you know, retoned. It's the same. It's 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 very similar drawings. Actually, here she's actually massing out these. You can see that these have become just masses. You guys can now draw solids and planes in Rhino, right? Because you made the pieces. You know how to do that. You can use your model as a scaffold, and on a new layer, you you can basically like keep these locked, and then on a new layer, draw the outlines of them as cubes, or make a line and extrude it as a plane, right? Now now you can begin to make these gestural. Or you could, in a side of Adobe Illustrator, you could just trace the outline of it. Um, but I, I kind of like the Rhino method because it actually gets you all of the geometry, right? So that's actually some of the things that this student did. So you're saying like build new quick little models? Yeah, make new models. It's yeah. cheap. It's really, really fast to do. And then you can use the same camera. This person used the same camera, you know, has the site again. That's one thing I didn't see a lot today, and it's just because we're around the project. But you got to get that corner back into these. And some people in my class had, uh, and, and this is something that's known, is that when you try to do a May 2D of the entire site, it can, it, can, it, 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 can be, um, it can cause some problems. So what you could do is you could turn off the site. I mean, you could, you, could, you could trace the corner so you know where it is, and you could have those lines in your drawing. Turn off the site, leave the buildings on, leave the corner on, and, um, and, and, and basically have your kiosk. And that's most of what you need. You just need the sidewalk and the corner in that context. You don't, you don't need the crosswalks. You don't necessarily need all those other curbs and details. Not necessarily. And so if that's causing you problems, just make sure that you get the corner in and just turn off all those other, all those other pieces. Because I think that some of the problem is that there's so much geometry and so much of it is outside of the camera, it's causing those problems. Okay. So this is, I think, actually just, uh, just, just that. It's basically drawn. Um, so this is another one of those diagrams that's just being drawn um, inside, of, inside of Rhino. We don't have this many colors, at least not in my section. Um, some other, so um, another kind of, of these uh, you know, analytical axons. This is a tectonic detail. This has, been, this has been removed. We saw some of these today in my section. Here's a diagram so of, these, of these ideas of this kind of joint but being, but being shown in, in, in context of the entire kiosk. For this person, an isometric didn't work, so they had to do an isometric because the pieces were lining up like together too much. So that might be something that you could do. So um, anyway, that's a that's a just an example of the kind of thing that I think we're looking for for the final of this. And there's there's some diagrams being done with the orthographic drawings and the scale figures sections. These are sections, and the the piece that didn't quite fit in is the diagram that shows where the sections come from. These are out of Rhino. These sections. And then the lastly, the student actually did a flipbook um, kind of presentation. So this is the camera progression. To kind of show going through that threshold. So this is the idea of that camera. You can do a film strip of these along the bottom of your page or something like that. You don't have to do, I mean, this kind of thing doesn't really show up well in a final presentation. It's more of a, it's, it, it works in the PDF. Um, Yeah, but it's pretty. It's pretty like, it's pretty like prescribed. I mean, if I were doing, it, I might script it or something like that. But but she was able to do it. I'm going to show you the method. Um, you know, the command just kind of repeats itself. But yeah, that's what they did. Okay, so that was those are the things I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to wait for if there's questions about what I'm doing. Uh, we can we can talk about it, and then if there any so if there's any time at the end, I can answer some other questions. But right now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna actually get into this. So um, you can go online and to find your photos, you know, you could look for the kind of person you want. You might want people sitting at a bus stop, and you you could actually literally you don't need to read what I read. <laughs> okay. Um, if I go into uh, Google image search, I could I could look for like person waiting for a bus or something like that, or like sitting uh, waiting for a bus. And you can go to images, and you can find you can find an image of a person sitting, you know, waiting for a bus. Like that's actually a pretty good image. Save it to your desktop, and that's going to be your your reference image. Another another page that I like is the sartorialist.com, which I think you guys saw me browsing there. Yeah, sartorialist. And this is a fashion uh, web page, but what I like about it um, is that a lot of times. They're, they're full figure people, and I don't know if you guys have looked for scale figures to cut out before, 
It's hard to find a full body <laughs> image like that goes all the way from the top of the head to the feet. And this page has a lot of like fashionably dressed people, which architects like, and they're usually full body. So that 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 kills two birds with one stone. Okay. So I like this page. There's thousands of like of these of these images, and I've I've used it for 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 years, um, and it works pretty well. So you can find that too. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and take this take this image and open it up in uh, Photoshop. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, in Photoshop, we're going to just quickly kind of mask out this um, this person. And uh, this technique is going to allow you to pop it out as as an image, uh, as an outline, and then as a 3D form. So it's really useful. And uh, I've taught this technique for for a while. It still works. Yes, I am. Okay. Thanks. Ah. It contains data which cannot be read. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm just going to start a. So what I did was I just did like a double click because that that was the background layer. I just want this to be an editable layer, so I did a double click and made that a, a, a just like a regular uh, layer. Steps right here. So um, in Photoshop, and this is going to be online as well. You're going to go into the channels. Um, panel here and make a new channel so click the little icon here and then click the I under RGB and that's gonna so you have you have an alpha channel which is essentially um, like a transparency layer that's what it's good for and this is these are all the different layers for color and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the paintbrush tool and we have black and white by default okay and the paintbrush if you're using um, if you're on the alpha layer you have to have this chosen you can um, paint white, and that's going to erase that kind of film that's on the image, that, so you can see through to the actual to the actual person there. Okay, and what you want to do is, um, I don't want scrubby zoom. Here we go, more key. You zoom into that figure, and using the paintbrush tool, you can um, just and with your mouse, you can you can paint the outline of the piece of the figure that you want, and you can use the um, you you can use like the bracket keys to shrink and make the brush grow. So you can make it small when you want like more detail, you know, around the hair and things. And make it big when you want to knock out, you know, larger areas of that of that of that figure. Okay? And um, you can do this like relatively quickly. It's easier this technique is easier than taking like the marquee or um, the lasso and like drawing, you know, the outline because that it doesn't it doesn't keep the state of it. You have to keep adding to that to that thing and adding to it and adding to it. And if you screw up, you lose the entire thing. This just stays. Okay. There's lots of ways to select things. This is one method, but this works very well because it's just it's just this sort of like persistent method. Okay. So you paint this mask, and you can you can use the brackets to change the size of it. You can use the um, the um, uh, zoom in to kind of uh, get yourself zoomed in really close. The closer you're zoomed in, the more control you're going to have over it. And um, I've gotten to the point where I can I can knock one of these out in like a couple minutes. And this is this is really easy work to be doing. And you can you can um, use a space bar to move around, and you can quickly kind of knock out this figure here. Okay. So um, so you're going to be you're going to be making that that layer um, on your um, on like your alpha channel. Okay. And um, just like those TV chefs or whatever, I'm gonna. I have one already done that I'm just gonna, like, open up. Cause I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go through all that. Hey, it came out of the oven. It's perfect. Okay, so, so this is, this is this 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 uh, this this guy that I found last year, and um, so I imagine I've already painted that, right? And now I've got this later. Okay, there's a couple things I can do with this. First thing I can do. Hold down the control key and you click the thumbnail. See, it turns into a little like marquee kind of thing here. Hold down the control key and click the uh, thumbnail, and you'll get the outline. Like that, just that actually gives you what that outline is. Okay. And then when I've got that, I go into and I make sure that I'm that I'm that this is selected. I have the RGB selected, and I can actually turn off the alpha. And then I could go ahead and I could say copy. And make a new file with a transparent background, <clears throat> and then paste it in there. And now, and, and this isn't greatly matched out, but now I have a figure that I can put into anything in Photoshop I want. I, I just keep a bunch of bunch of these on my computer, and I can cut and paste him into anything uh, that I want. Any question? Um, could you also use the magnet lasso tool 
You can use lots of selections. Yeah, magnet lasso though has the same problem that other kinds of selections has, which is that again, you have to you make that you make that selection, but then if you want to go back and edit, you have to subtract from it using the subtract thing. You have to go back and refine it. Magnet doesn't um, doesn't it's not as intelligent as like you are. Yeah. If it's really heavy contrast, then there's a lot, there's a, there's other methods too. But this this works consistently all the time. Yeah, it's time tested. Um, yeah, I have. If you're interested, I have a video on all the different methods of selections from Digital Fundamentals. You can check that out. Um, but this this is included in that as well. So if you have this figure, now you have them. Um, one thing to one thing to note, you know, uh, just to you can see in this figure, I actually have some stuff that's not quite erased yet. Um, I can go in with the paintbrush and just really make sure that you've got that cleaned out because anything that's black is going to show up as a transparency and so you really want to be careful to, to really make sure that all that is um is nice and clean wherever you have any overlaps and things and that's going to help you that figure actually wasn't okay so then go back and then with okay another thing that's nice about this method too is that if you wanted to like fix something you take the black paint and you can paint back red and this is a really powerful thing on computers. You can kind of like overspray with the white and then come back and refine it by like filling it back in with the black. That makes sense? So you might, you might go through and especially with things like hair and, and things in a detail and like maybe you, just, maybe you just aren't very careful here and you just kind of rough it out. Then you go back in with the black and you just, you actually paint the negative piece of it. So you actually paint in the parts that are negative. And I can, um, sometimes I find that that even goes faster for things. So that's what's that's a really nice method too, and that's hard to do with the other selection tools. Nick, you suggest using a fairly soft brush. Yeah, soft edge brush is actually a really good idea. What what Nick's talking about is if you go into the brushes by by default, you probably have the, a soft brush has edges that are, that are that are just slightly blurred, and you can do that by actually picking the brush like up here. A hard brush has a crisp edge, and the crisp stuff is going to give you that kind of weatherman effect, like like when you have like a TD weatherman and, and it has a hard edge on them. You don't you want like a softer edge normally if you're going to use these in bitmap. So a soft brush is going to give you a nice soft edge on that contour. Yeah. For the 2D line stuff, it doesn't matter so much. But when you use these in when you use these in Photoshop as bitmaps, the softer edge is a is a plus. That's a good point. Um, again, by default, most of you guys don't play with brushes, I assume. So by default, yours is going to be a soft edged brush. Could you do like a threshold on that alpha layer that's just black and white? You could do that too. Yeah, you can clean it up. You could also do like you could also do like a refined edge filter to clean it up. Yeah, I'm not trying to be super comprehensive. I'm just trying to um, get the, the basic method. I and mean, if you guys know like more Photoshop, there's always ways to improve this. But this this is this is pretty good. So um, okay, I've showed you the method where I can pop the image out in 2D. I mean, when it when it's in Photoshop. The one that's really important to us though is actually getting the vector out. Okay, how do you get this into Illustrator? So if I go in and I'm on Alpha. Remember, um, I, I have I have RGB chosen. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold down like the button for control, and that's gonna select the the alpha line. If I go on to to RGB, um, actually I've already got that. So then I go to paths, and um, I'm gonna there's this command here that says um, make a work path from uh, make work path from your selection. That's what you want to do, and you want to hold control. Actually, you want to hold Alt when you should click that. And that's going to give you this tolerance pop-up, and what you want to do is set that really low, because what that that is is that 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 determines how refined it's going to make this into a vector, and the lower that tolerance, the more refined it is. If you make it um, two or one, it's not going to pick up all the detail in the figure. And you, you can experiment with it, but I'm going to set it to 0.5, and you can see it actually creates a line. If I go through and whoa, if I hide, well. That's my, you can see the icon of it, that's my path, okay? And once I got my path, which is kind of hard to see, um, you're gonna go ahead and um, <clears throat> say export path to Illustrator. <clears throat> and you save the work path, that's what I made. And then I can save it uh, as an outline. And if I go into Illustrator, I can open that up. And that, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the 2D piece. So this can go into your Illustrator layout and you can, you can transform it, you can scale it, you can, um, you can save it from Illustrator to a DWG and open it up in AutoCAD. <clears throat> so 
So there's your outline. Okay. And you can do that with, with pretty much anything. And you could you could do various things to simplify it, but that's gonna give you kind of a like a very quick outline and figure. Okay. I can still take that figure and I could I could save it as um, export that as a DWG. Yep. And you know, save it as an old, <laughs> save it as an old version. It's always good. And if we want a Rhino, I can open that up. So I go in and top view or something. <clears throat> Import or insert. Oops. Say insert. <coughs> File. Um, everything desktop. You might even be able to insert it as the um, Adobe Illustrator. But there's, there's a thing, and you, could, you can work on the scale of that using the various methods that we, that we talked about. But once you've got it, this is, this is a 2D closed curve. So you can make it a planar surface, because it is, it is a closed planar curve, so planar surface. will make your little cutout person. And so then you can rotate 2D. Or rotate 3D. And then you can, so you can put this into your model, and this is the point that Nick was talking about, is depending on your camera, yeah, it's going to be 2D, so you actually have to rotate it. Oh, well, again, if it's it's gonna it's just gonna be a silhouette of the figure, so it's just like one of your plates in your thing, you know. So and, and it just, you just have to make sure to orient it to the camera whenever you're gonna use it. Can you see through it, or will it always be solid? It's solid. It, you have to if you make it a planar okay, surface, yeah. it's solid. Again, it's just like one of your metal plates in your building. I mean, it has no thickness, but um, it is, you know, basically like a two. It's it's like a piece of paper or like a cardboard cutout. So that's the idea. Um, so how do you know how to scale it for a perspective? Put it in every so place it in the model. Well, it does some kind of scale, but I don't always trust the scale that it does. I think So, um, so there's that piece of it, and and you just have to kind of play with those figures a bit to get them to work with your cameras. You know, when they're seated, they're especially kind of strange because they can't actually sit on the thing. So you have to kind of adjust them so that they fit in that plane. Um, so that's that's how you can get those into your model, and you can use those in, and you can use them inside of Illustrator too. So this next piece is going to be about um, creating uh, sections, and there's different tools. It's actually pretty easy to create um, a 2D section in your model. Um, I'll go ahead and hide some of these things here. Yeah, so I've turned off my, my hidden lines. There's actually, um, there's actually a couple of tools that do that. So there's, there's a tool called section. And you need to select all the objects that are going to be taken into the section. So you can actually group this or just make sure that you pick everything. But that's, that's really important to do. So you have to select everything. So like a top view, I would I would do this in top view, or or you know like whichever. I, I would do this in like an orthographic view. If you do it in perspective, it's hard for that laser beam right to know what it's actually going to intersect. So do so you want to use one of these views. Choose all the objects, press enter, and then you draw um, a section line. And and you could do something like I could you know what would be nice actually would be if you drew your section line in Rhino or you take the section line from in from AutoCAD, and then you snap to the section line when you draw your section. But, it, but basically, it's pretty much arbitrary. When you, it, it basically occurs wherever I draw a straight line. And you can see 
and and then um, that's going to generate. And when I press enter, it stops the command. And you can see that it creates. See those yellow lines? That's actually the section that it took. So it's a two-dimensional like orthographic line through that piece. Okay. What you want to do if you want to do something with that is you probably want to group those together because otherwise you'll lose them in all the different like parts. Put them on a layer. Okay. But a section, right? That'll actually just take a quick 2D section, and you can do things with that. Um, another thing that you can do that becomes you know, more useful later, but it's useful now, is there's a command called contour. And a contour is what? It's, it's a group of sections, right? So I can take my entire model, same thing as last time, press uh, enter, and then um, you, I actually want to click the option for range. That's going to allow me to take contours at a certain uh, a certain interval. So I could take contours from the center line of here to the center line of, of here, let's say, and the distance between them. You know, um, I'm not sure what my, what my what my intervals are, but let's say let's say two. I think it's in feet. Yeah. And so it's actually going to begin to give me contours at every you know two foot or every like half foot or you know like whatever my units are. Okay. And again, those behave like um, the other ones. So they're actually going to give you those, those lines. And you could use these you know, with a camera as part of your diagramming. You could use these to start to set up some orthographics. Um, you could use these. Uh, I mean, there's, 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 there's lots of uh, um, possible uses for them. Um, but I think sometimes it might be easier if you actually cut a section. And so that's what I'm going to do in this next piece. So those are, those are 2D lines. And you can take those in AutoCAD or, or you can take those like in Illustrator. But you have to actually move them into the um, drawing plane before you do it. They have to be flat, you know, here. So in, like in order to get them out, you have to take them, rotate them, and move them. Um, otherwise, you'll get them in 3D space, and they're not going to look right when you're in AutoCAD. Does that make sense? So if you get them in 3D, you've got to make them 2D again. OK, um, cutting a section. So one thing that you, that you can do is make a mass that is going to represent like where you want to cut your section. Okay, so imagine that block is what we're going to cut all this stuff from. And we're going to do um, a split command. So split, and the objects, and again, this is the, the technique I showed you guys. Choose everything, and then deselect the piece that you don't uh, want. I'm having trouble with my keyboard here. I should be able to deselect my, that mass there. I'm, I'm holding control. It won't obey me. Um, well, anyway, you should you should choose everything and deselect it. I, when you're using when you're using uh, Mac um, to do PC stuff, sometimes stuff like that happens. Anyway, fair enough. Um, choose all that stuff. Press enter, and then the cutting object is actually going to be um, the uh, mass. So I'll just do this in wireframe. Yeah, it's actually going to be. You know what? I'm going to lock this. And then we'll do this again. Split, um, unlock. Oh, is it not going to let me do that? Oh my gosh. All right, let's use a layer. Sorry. OK, so move this onto this layer. And we'll, we'll use that instead. OK, so let's say split, um, enter, turn this on. That's my cutting object. OK, and then I'm going to press enter. And it's going to go through, and it's going to, it's going to crunch for a while. And even if it's a split failed, like disregard, it's fine. OK, then looks like it's done. <laughs> I can turn that off. <clears throat> and then you can go through. And you should roughly be able to you know, hide these. Now, it goes without saying that that destroys your model. So you want to um, make sure to be aware of that and have a copy of it. But then you could do an ags and a metric. And you could, you could actually show in diagram, like, it's, let's say you have something that has like some symmetry. You want, to, you want to begin to show how those things pass through. Without that geometry getting in front of you, you can, you can split that and then diagrammatically show the other half and how they relate. And you can take that 2D section that I showed you and use that to show the section cut. OK? Um, I think. Thomas isn't here at the moment, but I think it, we don't want to see perspective sections. 
I think you really want to show these in an orthographic <laughs> or an axonometric when you do them. But this, this would set you up for, um, you know, you could, you, this is how my students last year and our, our students got their orthographic sections from this. They made these cuts and then they made 2D using this orthographic camera. And then they got the section cut line by doing a section tool on the end pieces and that gives you that nice 2D line, okay? So this combination of tools allows you to quickly, you can make you know, basically any kind of arbitrary section that you want um, using this method. <laughs> Are we gonna be allowed to like, do a traditional cut line like we did with Lotteret and we can show different uh, aspects of the rhythm? That's, that's up to your professor. I mean, it's possible. Um, you, you can. Uh, certainly. I mean, any any shape, you don't have to do like just the block that I did. You could take a shape and then extrude it and use that to make your cut. But then how are you going to show that is up to you. Um, but this is this is a quick way to generate um, these different kinds of sections. You know, once you've got this too, guys, you could do the Hitchcock maneuver, right, where you, um, where you begin to add. So you have that cut and you change the parallel camera to perspective and you have that section cut. So you get kind of a Rudolph um, you guys remember like the Paul Rudolph we showed you? This is so you can you can adjust this camera um, in the dolly and, and, and length, and that so that section is very flat, and it begins to take on some. Now you know again use this for good and not evil, like that kind of thing. But I think that's I think that's kind of a powerful thing once you've cut a section. Okay. Again, take the orthographic camera right, change it from parallel to perspective. We've seen this before, and then adjust that dolly. Um, so there's, there's that method. Um, the last piece I want to show you uh, quickly <laughs> is this camera uh, progression. And I hope that my file is actually going to work for this. Let's see here. If I go back to this, if I go back to the site model. It should, it should, it should be able, and, and if it doesn't, then just ungroup them and, and, and like allow, them. again, you can make copies of the uh, pieces in your file and put them on different layers. You can even do it on a different file if you, had, if you, if you had to, okay? Um, I think it works with groups though. I'm pretty sure. Let me, um, I just, I'm trying to find a file that has the site on it from a previous uh, version. Bear with me here. Why is it not working? That's bizarre. Do I have Rhino 5? Nope. Okay. Um, okay, let me, um, let me improvise here. So, this is our kiosk model, and you have to pretend that there's a site model in this, in this version. Okay, so let's, let's make a, let's drop an arbitrary um, kind of corner condition and quads. Okay, good enough. So we have, that's our corner and this is our kiosk. Okay, and imagine you have your site model that you guys made of Davidson and you have, um, you have lots of buildings and contexts and things. What you can do is you can draw a line that represents your, your, the path of your camera. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna actually block out a, a place that that your cameraman's gonna walk or camera person, and um, and then and then that's how you're going to uh, to sort of you're gonna sort of do like a choreographed view. So that line, imagine I'm gonna cross the street on the sidewalk, and then I'm gonna cross my I'm gonna pass by my kiosk on the sidewalk, okay? And I'm and I'm gonna record that progression. So the, the, what you want to do uh, also is you know, make a camera. So we're going to, in, in top view, I'm going to go ahead and um, turn on my camera. Actually, I'm going to do perspective view. I always get that backwards. So turn on the camera. <clears throat> there, okay, now in, in top view, basically, right at this point, my my camera point doesn't matter so much as my target point. And um, I want to make sure that my target point, the target point's the important piece. So maybe it's in the center of my kiosk, maybe it's in the front of it. It's the thing that my cameraman's always going to be looking at in this particular thing. And then I want to go ahead and move my, uh, my line down. And I want to, in this, in this, this is a really good place to, to have the Z's 
um, be the same. So I'm gonna put them both at seven foot. He's a tall cameraman. He's a Swede or something. Yeah. All right. So now that's that perspective is my is my camera, and I wanna I wanna change the lens length. Of it too. You can adjust that, but so there's my lens length. So I have a camera, and I have my my camera point and my model and all this stuff is looking is looking pretty good. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is take my line, I'm gonna divide it. Then you can say the number of segments you want in that. And this is the number of stops in that camera. So let's say 10 points or, or 20 points or whatever, let's say an even dozen. So I'm gonna say 12, and that creates points along that line, okay? And I've got my camera. And I want to, um, and I want to turn on knots. And knots are what points are. Actually, point. I'm sorry. Knots are for CV curves. Um, uh, point. And I can dr drag this camera point, and I have my perspective view. Actually, let's do a little bit of spring cleaning here. So this is my camera. This is my top view. Drag the camera point, and you snap it to this point. And then if you see, if I snap from point to point to point. And again, you're making 2D like of all of these, right? And you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna zoom and crop these. This is this is gonna um, establish. It's kind of this is this is kind of like a jig. Well, it's a little distorted, um, but you guys get the idea. I think I think my units are off, but you get the idea. You can draw any path you want. Like you you can make a curve. You can make a straight line going going across the corner. You can go from the library through your threshold or vice versa. And you have these points on a divided curve. And if you get your camera right. It's going to give you a sequence of these of these images. Okay. Adam? Oh yeah, it's on it's on the zero. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. So yeah, it's my line that's at fault. Yeah. Good good point. But you guys get the principle though, which is the important the important part. Divide. Most of the time. Most of the time in Rhino, guys, if you don't know what the tool is, um, it's like the AutoCAD equivalent. Okay, so this thing, this thing has arrays, it has fillet, it has rotate. If you think of it, just try typing it in. Yeah. And Jennifer brought up the uh, fear of making TV at large in Illustrator. One thing that might uh, ameliorate that a bit is to use a diagrammatic model as opposed to your full model. Yeah, it'd be much quicker to process. If you, if you diagram your project in a 3D way that's representative of whatever you're trying to show with the sequence, yeah. then that would be a simpler thing to deal with 20 and below. Yeah. So, in the, so the other one kind of um, went towards it and then went through the threshold. So you, you, you could do that kind of operation as well. And you might think of a film strip, even like a diagrammatic, you know, like film strip. And I'm that's not sure that the, the, the site in the back is going to be all that helpful. Yeah, you might want to simplify the site, just make it like a plane. Yeah. To represent a street side. I'm not sure you need all the complexity. To, I don't think the complexity is really going to serve. But again, the, the site model is a scaffold for any kind of abstraction right. that you want to perform. Right. So, so it's just useful. Make a street wall, yeah. make a corner, and just make it really simple. Yeah. But um, so hopefully that, that kind of uh, just shows you all the techniques that, that we used um, on, this, on this module previously. Um, to really get you just kind of like a comprehensive way of looking at this. I, you know, it's just there are things you could do with a Rhino model um, that you could do by hand, but are just so much faster. Particularly like the axonometrics, I think. I think you can just, you can, you can try so many different like scenarios with those. Turning things off, turning things on, diagramming them, changing the camera. One thing in my section that I talked about, I don't know if you guys did, but when you're doing axonometric details, Sometimes it helps to actually rotate your model upside down or to do a mirror of it and then take an axonometric of that detail so you can kind of get the underside of it and then, and then you diagram the hidden lines of it. Because some things can't be read very easily from the top down. So that, that's something that we talked about as well. Um, any questions about the, the methods of today? All, these are written out. I have all these on a, on a handout and you'll have the video as well. So hopefully um, they're pretty straightforward. We had a good question in our session from Andrew about um, can we make CAD diagrams, can we make CAD drawings? And my answer was really, the point of this is really to, to 
restrain yourself and use Rhino to see what it can do. So even though you can do some of these things in other ways, I think the point of this, for me anyway, is sort of you know, make your orthographics from Rhino. Mm -hmm. And the point is sort of to explore what that is. Yeah. In the future, no one's going to tell you how to make your orthographics. But right now, we want you to make your orthographics from Rhino to see what that's like, to understand what that means. Yeah. Um, so some things are easier to do in Rhino, like the, like the section thing. You can cut any arbitrary section again. And, and those are actually 2D, you know, those actually produce 2D drawings um, faster than if you were doing it inside AutoCAD. There's a tool, and it's on the handout called Section Tool, that if you have your own copy of Rhino, um, does a lot of architectural stuff that's really nice. Um, I don't show it because um, the school computers don't install it. But that's, that's another thing. That is really easy to make uh, really clean sections out of, much faster than AutoCAD. Um, and I think, you know, again, like, like Thomas says, if you're, if you're in Rhino all day, let's say, and you've been doing a lot of things, like you don't want to try to switch programs too often, so it may just be easier just to do your diagrams in uh, Rhino because that's what you're working in. You don't have to open up AutoCAD, have it in another window, have it bogged down your processor. If the drawings come out like roughly equivalent, sometimes that's usually, I mean, that, that can be helpful. Um, you just have to learn how, like, how to balance these different things. Like some of you guys are going to prefer it. Right, to, now we're, right now we're dating Rhino. Yeah. We're playing the field. We're going to see that through. First. That's right. Yeah, well said. Um, but any, does this seem pretty clear? The, we talked about this, was it last, last Wednesday? About how to, how to scale things in Illustrator using like guidelines and the transform tool, or calculating and using um, explicit transforms, the scale, that's how. You have to kind of wing it. You have to, I mean, there's, there's ways to be precise about it, but these different programs have different conceptions of scale, as we found out, and you just have to make it work, you know. I haven't found a good solid method for that yet. Any comments from the co-faculty? The peanut gallery? You're not the peanut gallery. Um, yeah, that's right. You guys are the producers. Um, and, uh, this is just a general Rhino question. Um, if you want to move an object to a certain amount, like five feet, mm -hmm. um, and like I try holding down shift to make it go in a line and moving it, and I'll touch it like five sure. feet. Do you guys ever talk? Well, we didn't because I was supposed to tell you about it. Um, there's relative coordinates versus absolute coordinates. You guys know about that sort of thing? So, um, relative coordinates are coordinates in relation to something. So like if I say move this five inches from where it is or five feet from where it is, they're relative to where it is in space, okay? Absolute coordinates are like latitude and longitude on a map, right? There, there is a point at which it's like 10 foot in the X and negative five foot in the Y, those are absolute, okay? By default, it's usually absolute. So when you say you want to move it five, it puts it at five in the X instead of five inches or five feet from where you want to. So you need to do it in relative. So if I had this object and I say move, Point to move from, okay, find, let's say, the center of this uh, circle, right? And then point to move to. Now, if I say point to move to, you know, zero, zero, right, it's going to go to zero, zero. But if I say um, move and I click a point, you actually want to say um, r, like lowercase r, and that gets you into, that gets you into sort of like your relative coordinates. Uh, R5, 0. So move it 5 in the X and then 0 in the Y. And that'll move it 5. All right. So R. And you have to think of three dimensions. So if you, if you want to move it in the Z, you have a third coordinate, right? X, Y, Z. Move it 5 up would be 0, 0, uh, 5. And you do R, 0, 0, 5 to go up. Okay. This is true in AutoCAD, too. Like, this is actually something for modeling in 3D or working in 3D and in anything and in 2D. The relative absolute coordinates thing is not going away. Okay. If you just type in a dimension on it, if you're making it, line. if you're making it, that's that's one thing. If you're moving it though, you do need to recognize those. So move. So what? Like move one foot. Oh, select like the point, and then move one foot. Oh, and so you get, okay. And then you can, they can all that shift. Well, that's nice because it's graphical. You can do that too.
all works too. I learn something new every day. Okay. Any other thoughts? Thanks, guys.